and welcome to Face to Facts. I am Nick Face. It's great to see you all here once again. We have on our show this, uh, today, we have Tom Smith joining us, and we have Phil Healy, who's on daddy duty. Uh, hello, welcome hello. in, Tom. Hello, hello. Did you enjoy? Did you enjoy your tea? Uh, I'm gonna save it till tomorrow. I don't want to be staying up all night. Okay. I only put a little sprinkle of it in there, just to all FYI. Right. But I think you're gonna really like it. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, I will be starting a new venture in the next couple weeks, where you can come down and get your own teas and shakes at my new place called Empower. So. I hope that some of our friends, family that watch these shows can stop in, say hello, and taste these amazing drinks. So that's they my, are good. Uh, they are good. That's, that's my little thing about that. So I do want to talk about, of course, sports because face to facts, that's what we do. We talk and fight and argue and debate about sports. And I want to start with the Patriots because I have a lot to say about them right now. And I'm sure Tom has a lot to say about it as well. Um, I just want to start out by saying the NFL has lost me as a fan, supporter, and anything regarding what the league does. For them to have played that game on what should, which was Monday evening, Monday night football, was disastrous and atrocious and never should have been played. What's your, what's your take on it? That's my statement. You yeah, can- I mean, if they were – if they wanted to play the game, they might as well have just done it on Sunday when it was supposed to be. Now we have to deal with another uh, player on the team that has the virus supposedly, and that's Gilmore, Stefan Gilmore, one of our best yep. defenders, defensive player of the year last year. That's a huge hit. So now you have Cam and Gilmore who have it. They're going to turn into the Tennessee Titans very quickly. Yeah. Um, and what, I mean, and whether this is bad, whether this whole thing is bad for these players, I mean, they're athletes 99% of the time they'll heal and they'll get better and everything. And yeah, it could be much ado about nothing. It could be, but still the media comes out, gets this story out here, it becomes national news. And now everything looks horrendous for the Patriots. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's just ridiculous what they're doing, what, how they're handling this right now. Um, and it's all about it's, money. It's, it's all about money. It's all about the NFL getting their money, getting their ad revenue and making them play when they really shouldn't be playing. Well, I am an said, advocate of not having to shut everything down. I've been an advocate of that for a while. You put your mask on, you stay healthy don't live your life in fear. I've always gone by that model. You got to take every day, one day at a time and do everything that you can that makes us have our freedom. And our freedoms have been greatly taken away from everything right now. So I get it. I get that stance. But what I also don't understand is if there is a supposed person that has it and then it leads to an outbreak and you didn't quarantine and you didn't do anything and it makes everything look worse, how the heck are we going to get back to normal? How the heck are we going to do it? I mean, we said a few weeks ago that they should have just done what the NBA and the NHL did. And they, um, I don't don't know what made them decide to go this route, but it wasn't the smartest thing to do. But I mean, who knows what's really going on? That's the thing. We don't, we don't really know what's going on. What I can tell you is that there is a supposed game this Sunday against the Denver Broncos. Probably they're playing. Probably. Most likely. Um, and you're going to have to deal with Gilmore out and most likely Cam Newton again. Fun times if you're a Patriot fan. I mean, you know, I didn't watch, I didn't watch the game at all because I, I couldn't. But, um, I mean, from the look of the score, it seemed like they held their own pretty good for most of the game. Should have won the game. And – Going into it, I thought they were going to lose. That's what I said on the show. I thought that they were going to lose. I thought they were going to lose pretty big. But not the way it was. Not the way yeah. they lost. No way. That game was a whole lot closer than it should have been. It should have been a win because Kansas City did not do one thing to impress me as a fan or show me anything as a fan that they're the Super Bowl, reigning Super Bowl champions. I was not impressed at all. 
So what you're saying is if Cam Newton was healthy, we would have won that game most likely. Yep, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that if Cam Newton were playing, we would have most likely have won the game. Now the decision that happened from Monday night. The Patriots elected to go with Brian Hoyer as their quarterback over Jared Stidham. What you saw was a disgrace. You saw a guy that had absolutely no clue what he was doing on certain situations, threw the game away, basically, on opportunities that you can't throw the game away at. For example, to close out the first half, you had 16 seconds left on the clock. You had time for one more play to maybe set up the field goal to tie the game, and it would have probably been six to six. Instead, Hoyer gets sacked. There's no timeouts left, and you couldn't even get the points on that. You also had way too many opportunities where a ball was thrown up by Mahomes, and it could have been intercepted. Lots of drop balls. The McCordys were a couple of them. You had Gilmore drop a very easy one. You also had Julian Edelman completely gave up a, 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 a ball, and he deserves a lot of criticism right now because Julian Edelman in the past two years leads the NFL in dropped passes. What's going on with him? Not a, not a clue. Not a clue. I don't know what his, what his excuse is. He looks horrible. Yeah. Horrible. And yes, he's a Super Bowl champion. Yes, he is loved here. He's one of the best Patriots that's ever put on the uniform. I'm not going to take that away. But every single game, there's becoming these stupid drop passes from him. And that cannot happen as a professional football player and wide receiver in the NFL. So that's got to change. I don't know if there's something wrong with his hand or fingers or whatnot, but put some freaking stick them on your hands. My God. Yeah, I mean, you know, we saw it. We saw it right off the bat in uh, in the first game when he had that wide open, wide open pass, and he completely dropped it. So I'm looking for a rebound performance if they do happen to play uh, for Sunday against the Broncos. Now, the second half comes. Hoyer goes back out there. I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. What the heck is going on? you got to give Stidham the chance. Well, the Patriots finally had enough of Hoyer, and they benched him, and they put Stidham in. In the first drive, he looked okay. He scored a quick touchdown, and I started to say, okay, maybe we actually do have a chance here. But then you saw the inexperience, and then you saw the chuck and ducks. He throws them up in the air, hoping for a miracle, and they got – I think he had two interceptions – One of which was not his fault, I will say. One of which was Edelman's 100%. But that's two interceptions that go on the books for him. And his career, I know it's a numbers kind of game, if you look at it, uh, for his completions and everything, it does not look that promising. So could he be the quarterback of the future? Not from what I saw. So the Patriots are in a real tricky spot if Cam Newton is not the future of the Patriots. I think that's what we saw from Sunday. I think that if Stidham had the keys to the kingdom, it would be a totally different team, and we would be probably the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, Denver comes to town this upcoming Sunday, and that's a team that is not that great. So it should be a performance where they're iffy. They're iffy, but they're not the best. They're not the greatest. They're not Miami. They're not, they're not the cupcake, but they're not that great. I do expect a win, but I think that's only if Cam Newton is your quarterback. If you have Hoyer or if you have Stidham in, I don't see a win. And yeah. you're probably, most likely out with – not most likely. You're definitely out with Gilmore too. So that's what's got to change right there if there's any chance of that happening. What is your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you know, Den- Denver is – uh, Denver it should be an easy win, um, but I mean, then where if Cam doesn't play, then they're gonna have to rely heavily on the defense. Doesn't sound too good. So, looking ahead to other games, or looking at some other games that happened in the NFL this week, I happen to get a chance to watch Tampa, and who and Tampa was uh, faced the LA. Uh, LA Chargers. 
I keep forgetting that name. It's, it's all these name changes. It used to be San Diego Chargers. Now it's the L.A. Chargers. And that was very impressive from Tom Brady. He had five touchdowns on the day. You're seeing a guy, and that was to five different receivers, by the way, too. He's not done. Just put it out there. He's not done. Tom Brady, I think, will be, if not the MVP, I would, I'd say it was Tampa pretty much has clinched their spot to be a predicted choice to be in the Super Bowl, if not by what we saw here from uh, Sunday's performance. So Brady with five touchdowns did have one interception there. I really wouldn't blame that on him per se. The Chargers did give them a good run though. I will say that game was pretty entertaining from Sunday afternoon. So I want to see some more. I want to see more of what Brady can do in the team. And it definitely is a added level of interest, at least to watch another team with your quarterback that was there for years, lead another team and be successful. So I do tip my cap to him because he is doing a very good job. Uh, welcome in, Phil. Yo, sorry. How are we? That's <laughs> okay. right. we, were just talking, we were just talking about the Patriots from what should have been Sunday, was moved to Monday. We were just yep. talking a little bit about how that game never should have been played because now it's, <laughs> now, yep. it, now it's led into this whole outbreak now where not just one player, multiple players now well, have this virus. So Yeah, I heard Gilmore had it. And who else yep. got it? Did it? Somebody on the practice squad. Oh, I heard that, yeah. Uh, yeah the, so the funny, have, the, oh, the funny thing about it is the whole uh, Mahomes shaking uh, – Gilmore's hand at the oh, end of the sure. game and yeah. everybody's freaking out now <laughs> yeah and also he gave him a peck on the cheek which you know that's what you do at the end of the game but that's part of <laughs> I don't know why it just seemed more a little more ceremonious than usual um, I heard Belichick went for the full face oh! visor of uh Andy Reid I did I saw the elbow at the end I'm like oh all right yeah. and I'm like at least yeah. they did that I thought Belichick was going to come over and do one of these and just flick it off <laughs> flick it off what a jerk um looks he looks like peter griffin i mean what else can i say which one um peter griffin from family guy no 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 which coach andy Andy reed looks like peter griffin andy reed because i could see belichick doing like a adding like another 75 pounds and like having that face for it but yeah uh well yeah i guess the cam newton thing seems silly like did he go hat shopping is that the thing that was happening is that the maybe I think he was styling his hair, as a matter sure. of fact. I think that's uh, what it's from. Well, it's just kind of like, oh, it's kind of one of those things, like, just don't do it, guys. Just like anyone, just don't do it. If you don't have to, don't do it, especially if you're, like, <laughs> mouth wide open. Uh, I'm going yeah. shopping. Uh, but, yeah, man, they could, and they could have won that game with him. That's Absolutely. a tragic. That's a tragedy yeah. of it. Or they could have won it with But someone. I think – They could have won it with me. I think, <laughs> I think what this proves, though, Phil, I think what this proves – is that the Patriots better damn well sign Newton to an extension because what you saw there from Stidham oh. and Hoyer is garbage. Yeah. Garbage <laughs> between Hoyer. the two of them. Well, Hoyer, Hoyer's always going to be trash. We, we all know that. <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah. we said that last week. Hoyer, you know. Hoyer's Brady's ball boy. I'm surprised he's yeah. not the ball boy in Tampa. That's a good question, actually, yeah. I don't know why he isn't there. Or a good point. I don't know why he isn't either. But, yeah, I think you're right, Tom. I think – I think you're both right. Just like Sidham didn't have a – he had a couple passes. You're like, all right, let's get into this. And, like, in the beginning of the fourth, they're only down 13 to 10. And, yeah. um, you know, then Sidham has – I don't know. I People say you shouldn't blame that pick six on Sidham, but I kind of do. He threw it in the flat to Edelman, who was covered, and Edelman was kind of like, what? <laughs> Just – I mean, he should have caught it short, but I don't know. Did you well, hear my point? Did you hear my point? No, Maybe I'm sorry. Not, I didn't. From what yeah. I talked about – Julian Edelman leads the league in the past two years of drop drop passes. Oh, so that horrible. is that something sucks. that is very, very, very concerning to me. So I talked with Tom a little bit about, does he have a problem with his hands or fingers? Is there something more to the story there? Because every single game now, and I, I'm, it's awful to have to bring it up. Oh, of course. But there's at least one or two opportunities here in each game that I see where Edelman has a pass that's you know, thrown to him. And he somehow drops it or doesn't connect with it. I, I don't get it. Well, what do you – I think one of the things we, we should do now, it's not necessarily selling high, but it's selling at worth. I think you trade him and get a, a, a dra- couple draft picks for him. I mean, honestly, it seems like – that sounds like heresy, but maybe that now's the time. And I love the guy. And, like, I'm sure every, like, New Englander 
who like that scrappy young uh, slot receiver doesn't want to see him go. And I don't necessarily either, but give me a memory. This is the memory that sticks in my crawl from last year's playoff game. Uh, Edelman had a ball in the flat and he had for a first down. I think, I don't know if it was the fourth down or a third down. And he just, I remember this. He dro- He drops it. He had a clean, he had a clean path too for like the first down and more, but he just dropped it. And that just seemed like the season in a nutshell. I agree. Just, I don't I know. Agree. But I, he's done so much for us. I mean, it's just like the Brady thing, man. And I would love yeah. to see him compete on another team, but I don't know. It's sad. It might happen. We'll have to no. see what happens on the whole thing. But I still think the Patriots, because the NFL is ridiculous, I still think that they play Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do. I don't, I don't think. They will play. They yeah. will play on Sunday. Well, and I, th- I don't think it's going to be pretty. No, because they're going to – no, they're hosting Denver, right? Hosting. And I, would Denver, I wouldn't get on the plane. No. Uh, is, I uh, don't think Tennessee's back yet to playing. I don't think so. And did you hear the stuff about them – I know Tom's shaking his head. Did you hear that – did any of you hear that stuff about uh, – what's it, the quarterback uh, – what's his name? Tannehill had like an off-site like uh, workout thing going on? Yeah, I that's know, probably I was, what's going on. Yeah. I was I was shaking I was shaking my head because I don't uh, Tennessee isn't playing this week. Oh, they are playing this week. Okay. They no, they're not. Yeah, I so. thought it was a I thought it was a more disapproval, which I, I you know it could no, be no, both. No, no, no. I mean not I of me, but of Tennessee in general. <laughs> I felt I'm always gonna have disapproval of you. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, <to say. laughs> no, that's, yeah, I walked into that one. I really shouldn't. Uh, no, but like I I just want to bring up another point too. Like, I don't understand the the hype of Jerry uh, of Stidham. Like of some of the fan of some fans because he goes into these games and has that one great first drive and then you're like all right well here comes the the fall apart oh, here Brady goes. number drive. two here comes here's the next yeah. Tom Brady relax folks I mean Brady, that was a once in a lifetime sort of thing that happened from and, there so and he had I mean, three he had three picks in that game two of them counted yeah right yeah and yeah it's not, weird. He's, He's not a great quarterback, and I agree with you too, Phil. I, I say, I say, like ship Edelman off some somewhere, even even if you get like I don't know. I think if you trade him, I don't know, to somebody like Atlanta or something, get like a Julio and a late round draft pick or something. Oh, I don't think you wouldn't get. I, I I like what you're saying. I don't think you'd get Julio, but I think you would get. Maybe you get like a utility guy. I mean, get a defensive play. Like try to get, you know, maybe you get like one, a linebacker or or kicker. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Right. Give me, give me two draft picks and a kicker, and Edelman and George. Honestly, that might be—I know this might be heresy again, but that might be a steal. I'll be honest. Like, give me a good kicker in that, because that. Think about that. That's one of the things. It seems like every other good team has a great kicker. Like Kansas City yeah. has a pretty, good, pretty good one. Uh, Baltimore does. I think uh, L.A. Chargers, and I think. You know, well, the, and then um, you know. and then the game to the not this past one, but the game last week. Um, you know, the commentators were saying, "Oh, you know, can't uh, Newton's you know throwing to Nikhil Harry? He's like his locker room buddy." I mean, you don't see you're not seeing Newton throwing to Edelman every single every other throw like Brady. You're seeing him throw to the young guys. So I mean, there isn't really a need yeah. for for Edelman to be here. Edelman had that great game in Seattle. Um, yeah. and he gassed him, but you know what? I, I think you're right. And actually, I don't know if you guys brought up Harry at all, but he's a guy, it looks like he's coming into his own right now. I don't know what yeah. you think about that, but I, no, well, great, I, great, I but think I, Tom Brady not being there has a lot to do with it. I mean, Brady, <laughs> sure. if he dropped one ball, I mean, you wasn't going to go back to Harry, you know, that's just sadly what it was. Well, and, um, I mean, the, the re- only reason why Edelman really blew Seattle out of the water was because Newton was still trying to, you know, learn learn how the guys were going to play and stuff. So, that's I, I feel like that's the only reason why we saw Edelman yeah. so much. But there, there's no need. I don't really feel like there's a need for him on the team anymore uh, other than, you know, everybody loves him on the Patriots. I mean, I'm – I'm sure he gets, like – does he get double coverage anymore or anything like that? I mean, he still is a threat enough, you know what I mean? But it seems yeah. like – I don't I don't, but I don't blame that Stidham pass on him. I really kind of – I mean, yeah, he should have had it, I guess, but he was going to get either clobbered right there or, you know, maybe a yard or two. And it's just like – it was clear he was, like, covered. I was ready to go in the other place. I don't know. Yeah. The one thing I do want to say, and I want to change gears with um, – the Patriots, 
I do want to say that there's one team. Well, there's all, they've always kind of been a tease for a long time. But are the Packers for real finally? You don't think so, Tom? No. You shake your head? No, because they always do this. They do this every season. But they got this new guy in uh, – what's his name? Um, Love, isn't it? Something like that. And it looks like he's – got something to do with maybe Rogers playing well or, or whatnot. I, I don't know, but I like what I see so far from the Packers and my other team that I like so much is uh, the Seahawks. Those are the two teams that really have impressed me so far, but I will say, you, I think we need to be very careful here with Buffalo. Oh, of course. I, oh, thought, yeah. you, I thought you were going to bring that up when you brought up Green Bay, to be honest. And, yeah. and another, I'm, and another, I another... really am worried about Buffalo. <laughs> Go ahead. <Tom. laughs> <laughs> never thought I'd say that, and I never no, thought I, I'd I ever say too, that. But, but another team that's really, another team that's really uh, impressed me is the Chargers. Yeah, yeah, but they've impressed you know, me this year too. They, they're one in three now. So, but the two they lost but, a really tight game to Kansas City. They and lost that, it last week. I mean, that was an up and down battle. I mean, they want to compete with the big boys, which is good. Yeah. Yo, oh, but don't, I, 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 don't, I don't, don't think they're going to be there at the end. I, yeah. I just don't. No, I'm not saying they're going to be there at the end, but they, they're, they're really impressing me this season compared to other seasons because, you know, they're, they're basically known as a, a joke of a team out there. Yeah. And Anything the else on like, football, guys? Well, that quarterback oh, is only going to get better, I think, don't you think? And he's a rookie, right? Yeah. Was he a backup too? I forget if that or if it was like I think he I think he's either a rookie or he's in his second season, but this is the yeah. first time he's actually he's a rookie. Like stepped on. He is the team. rookie and that's why they went they that's why they gave up and said goodbye to Philip Rivers, which yeah. was I think a good move on their end. I it's think a huge move because I mean he's yeah. he's it's a step it's he, a step towards getting younger and building mm -hmm. for the future. He's an incredible quarterback. I mean he's the really way he's playing good. against these teams that they're, you know, cutting it close with is just crazy it's insane proving something which is good yeah yeah and uh buffalo bill just gonna say buffalo bills will be a problem uh but we face them twice so i mean if you sweep those games you're good and you have a long season i mean if it doesn't end in De december <laughs> if the nfl doesn't break down if that e if it even makes it through november never yeah mind december <laughs> well yeah I, any, I don't think it will and any but... team with any time any team with aaron Rodgers always has a chance you know what i mean it's a <laughs> chance i, I want to Tom, please. Whether, whether. <laughs> me oh, giving me the fake. Okay. No, I mean, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm living like six years ago, but I think, I think you all. Phil, what's the scoop? What's the scoop with the NBA Finals? I will be completely honest with you. I'm not watching <laughs> zero, zero what, minutes what, of it. What, you and the rest the of NBA? America. <laughs> yeah. What's, what's the worst on? rated? It is yeah. the worst rated NBA Finals in history. And it's the, that bad. That was up, yeah. And, and to be fair, you know what? The NBA Finals, and this isn't a comp out, because I, I do think it's the viewership is lower no matter what. But I think uh, the metrics for determining who watches the NBA is, uh, is kind of outdated because a lot of people are watching online or streaming it. So, I mean, they don't – if you go by the Nielsen ratings, which are kind of outdated to begin with, uh, it doesn't show the proper uh, audience, but I, I do think viewership is down. It's also down for the NFL and you know NHL and everything else across the board for obvious reasons. I know why. I know why. But. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, just like oh, well, you could do a whole like you could do um, for NBA. You could cite a bunch of stuff, but uh, on top of like their social uh, their social awareness kind of branding, there it's also just like you know we're in the middle of this weird pandemic stuff and. And the whole thing is kind of thrown off. And I think, uh, well, to the NBA Finals, just to get to it, the Heat are up 3-1. Uh, Miami lost the first two. Lakers. Lakers are up 3-1. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Yes, yes, uh, Lakers yes. are up 3-1. Pains. I, my heart just exploded right yeah, there. Exactly, yeah. No, that's wishful thinking on my end. But that's uh, – Lakers won the first two, and Miami uh, took that game three, and a great performance by Jimmy Butler and the rest of the team. And Bam out of Bayou came back in game four. And, but Miami lost a close game um, down the stretch, and uh, they lost game four. And, you know, I think Miami – I think it'll be it's very similar to how the Miami Celtics uh, series went. I think Miami will win another game, but I don't know if they can win three in a row. I mean, I think it took a lot out of them to win that one game. I think it can be done. But the Miami's a good team. Miami's a really good team. Their role players are really good, and they move the ball well. And Rondo is uh, – Rondo's kind of – 
he's skating. He's skating through. He's like, it looks like he's on skates. And I don't mean because he travels all the time. I mean, just he knows how to move the ball. He knows how to push the buttons. He's really good out there. And, and, and to, how many, um, how many championships will this be now for Le- LeBron James? I'm just going to go out and I, say it. The Lakers are four, champions. I believe. Is this- so four. Yeah, three or four. Okay. It's four. He won two with Miami and one with Cleveland. And it'll be the second one for Rondo, I believe. Because yeah. I don't think Rondo won another one. I know we said that maybe no, he didn't. In the previous show. 2008, but, uh, he won with the Celtics, and that was just Celtics, about it. Yeah. Which is interesting. I'm, Celtics not, and... I, I, I'm not rooting one outs for the Lakers. I've never been a Lakers fan. But the question here I have to say is, like, oh, is, this, is this really 17 championships for the Lakers? Will this be? Or do you say well, it's 12? This is a good question. And, That's and question, yeah. what's it? Is it 12 and five? Yeah, uh, maybe. I, I don't know the numbers Something off the top like that. of my head. For, because they used because to be the Minnesota or Minneapolis Lakers. Used to, it used to be the Minneapolis Lakers, and then it moved to, obviously, L.A. So, you know Where what? There are truthfully, no lakes, yeah. Truthfully, I don't. I don't give them 17. You have a, It's a different name. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't – honestly, like, I, I don't care as yes, much. Yes, it's a, it's a technicality. So. Sure, and I'm not as much of a purist to kind of uh, go down Well, this is route. an asterisk championship anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> sure. Uh, you can throw that out too. But uh, because a lot of people – like Michael Rappaport, one of my favorite comedians and actors, has a podcast, and he always gives uh, Boston – like Bill Simmons and Boston people crap – for uh, because like <laughs> an elite you actually of, like him huh you oh, actually I love like him. I, love him. I, I don't agree with him all the time but i do love way him. to go phil Locked you gotta that. get him going Locked him. <laughs> oh of course i'm sure you did i'm sure why not did. um because i imagine you blocked each other because that seems like that's how it would go it's phil, like you're gonna i get call him going. i call him go. i call i call him phil. the db he's the db oh yeah no he's a fantastic he's a db, DB. uh yeah. but i love him i think he i think he's funny i think he's right about a bunch of stuff uh, but I also disagree with a lot of what he has to say. I, I disagree slightly with his, his umbrage with the Boston Celtics championships of uh, the 60s and uh, some of the 50s. Like a bunch of white guys hanging around, and then finally there's a couple of black guys on our team, and we, you know, we were the only team with it. Actually, and yeah. one of the things, and Bill, you know, I, but in my head it's like, no, Bill Russell won those cha- – well, you had a great team, and Bill Russell was one of the centerpieces of it. And right. but to get to the question, yeah, I mean, I guess you can count those 17 championships and you'll be on par with the Celtics, but even more interest to kind of go head to head. And that's why I think a lot of people are kind of disappointed that the season make it to the finals because yeah, Lakers Celtics would have yeah. been an outstanding finals. Oh, I don't think fun. the Celtics would have won, but it would have been fun. No, I'll and completely I, say that. No, and I, I, I think they would be in the same boat as Miami, maybe slightly better. I don't know, I, but I think. Jimmy Butler has been – he's been playing pretty damn well, and I think the Heat have at least another game they can, they can win. But other than that, you know, it's, it's, it kind of blows because it's boring where you, you're kind of over – they're overmatched. Because uh, Anthony Davis, he's the guy – I mean, I shouldn't say no one's talking about him. Everyone is. But you, when you think uh, – Lakers, what do you think? Who comes to mind when you say Lakers? Jason I think Murray. of uh, – Sh- uh, Kobe Bryant and Shaq. Oh, I mean, uh, well, okay. I mean, j- not all time, but I mean, just like right now, currently. LeBron. Yeah, you think LeBron. I mean, and then it's like, Dad. oh, yeah, there's <laughs> <laughs> who, you know, one of the greatest players of all time, arguably. But, uh, but oh, yeah, I know. I don't like, I've, I've grown more accustomed and appreciative of the game. I used to hate Michael Jordan. I still kind of do, but he is one of the best. Um, How do you hate Jordan? I mean, easily because I grew up watching basketball when he was around. That's why. Because I want I've rooted and just like anyone outside of New I was, England, we Tom and I were too young basically for Jordan. We were I was five, were, six, seven you basically. Were in, you were in utero. I was uh, when he his first championship. I didn't I missed because I wasn't into basketball. It was like that. Summer. I am much I more know. of a hater of LeBron out of anybody. I'm just he's insufferable to me. I will not root for that. Guy, I have to be oh, nice. Yeah. That, that <laughs> gentleman. Uh, ever. Yeah, I don't. Um, ever, 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 ever. I, I don't know. I'm not against, like, there's some things I don't, some things in his play, I'm like, yeah, that's weird. Uh, or it's like, and I'll get angry at him because he's just like anyone else. Like anyone who went, like any New York, well, I shouldn't say Giants because they beat us twice, but any uh, other, like. Lock. I, yeah, I know. well, luck and, you know. Lock. I don't know. Not all the time. Not skill. <laughs> Not skill. <laughs> There's, I don't know. That seems like a lot of denial there. Not, not in just, those Super Bowls. It was a lot of luck. 
Really no, I, you oh, know what? I'm having flashbacks. No Not, more. I'm I had having to flashbacks. Do it. Um, no, but it, like anyone who like just Seattle Seahawks, any like fan of the Seahawks or of Atlanta or even of the Eagles or any other like team or the Bills, you know, like they hate yeah. Tom Brady for good reason. Uh, you know, that's I, I chalk that up to that, like or chalk it up to that. And I think there's a lot of that for the rest of the league. But you know, the point original point I'm getting about like when you think about the Lakers. LeBron, but there's one amazing player who will be a Hall of Famer, Anthony Davis, who's one of those crazy he's a hybrid... difference maker. I'll give it to him. Oh, he's an incredible yeah. difference. He's not a difference yeah. maker. Difference he's a maker. pillar of that team. Like yeah. he if he's what he, if he's not on that team this year, they do not make it to the finals at yeah. all. I I don't know. Maybe I, they Anthony, do. I have no problem with him. Yeah. But wait till you meet him. Yes, exactly. He's a delightful got, jerk. I don't know. Uh, no, Dwight Howard is the one who's the jerk. I, I'll just. <laughs> uh, Say that. Uh, I can't. I know I said it on an earlier show. I'm kind of rooting. I'm more rooting for Marquise Morris. Uh, oh, are you? I, yeah. Well, I loved him on our. You know, I loved him when he was on the seas, and I love the fact that him and his brother had switched. His twin yeah. brother and him have switched. You know, when they played in college, I think, or it was in high school. I forget. Um, but there's a lot of they're jokers. Yeah. Yeah, but I I think they're legit. Like he was a good role player. Um, but yeah, there's yeah Caldwell is good. I think uh, Caruso is a good player. And he also makes it like you don't have to be good looking to be in the NBA. Uh, you can have, just have a, a weird, you look like a Franciscan monk and just with a weird face and you're good to go. Uh, yeah, there are a lot, there's a lot to, if you like basketball, there is a lot to like about these Lakers. They, they play the game pretty well. They play a good game, as they say. Um, for and any Frank of Vogel. you out there in TV land, if you yeah. want to listen to Phil, by all means do that. Oh, I go one ear out the other. Yeah, with I know, the NBA, I know. But that, that's just know. me. And Frank Vogel, <laughs> Frank Vogel was a video tech for the Celtics uh, under Doc Rivers, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and he was Who? Coach. Speaking of which, speaking a, of which, Doc of, Rivers, uh, yeah. you, you had to bring oh. up the Doc, huh? You had sure. to bring up Doc. What's up? Because I think, I think you know my standing on what I would have done if I were in charge of the Celtics. Oh, kept him? I, if I I I would have fired Stevens and I would have hired Doc Rivers <laughs> after he was fired, hundred you know percent. I'll that, be completely honest not, with you. If if he wanted to do it, and I think we brought it up last time. If he wanted to do it, I'd welcome back with open arms because I think yeah, I would too. I don't think the it's not that I don't think the guys are aren't listening to Stevens. I just don't think he's. I don't know. Maybe they're okay. Maybe it is. Maybe they don't listen to him as much. I don't know. Uh, Stevens is one of those. He's just a coach. I mean, it's it's. I don't think he's a difference maker. Truthfully, yeah. Really, I don't think these players in the NBA need a real good coach anymore. I think it's a players run league, and they kind of do whatever the hell they want to do. I look think. At, look does. at LeBron. Look at LeBron and the Lakers. You really think the coach matters there? Heck no. I think to a degree, but I also think he is kind of an enigma in the sense, like there are players. Yeah. I think he's an enigma where he is like that Russell esque like player coach. And he's old enough and he's earned enough to be there and on all that stuff. I just uh, don't understand why we don't see more examples of player coaches more in sports. We saw point. it back in the days. That's a good we point. saw it back 40s, 50s, 60s. I mean, it yeah. happened a lot, especially in baseball. Oh, why don't we don't see it anymore? Baseball. Why? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand why. I, it's that's not, a, that's it's like one of those question. positions. It's like one of those positions where you think, oh, I have to have that coach. Yeah. I know for me, I mean, I always kind of self-coached myself on when I was, you know, playing that, that sports and everything. And that's why I'm now <laughs> not in Major League Baseball and I had no career. But, I mean, it is But I do think that's an incredible question. It really is. No, I, cause I, think, I, I think it is. I, I, I think about it a lot and I say to yeah. myself, why don't we see this model at all? Yeah. I think you'll see it in the future coming. I do. I think because it's more of a corporate structure. I yeah, think that's the biggest. I can see it. You know what I mean? Because especially, yep. with, I'll, I'll stick with basketball for a second. But with basketball, you have, you don't have just one coach. And that's another thing too. Like the history of coach, Tom is not, I swear Tom's not asleep. But uh, the history, yeah, check it, nodding off. Uh, the history of coaching. Tom, Tom's hibernating for the winter. <laughs> yeah, waiting for the NHL season. But uh, we have. We'll get there, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> you only used to have like, a coach and maybe a couple of assistants, maybe like one or two. But now you have like, it's almost like a presidential cabinet. You have like five like, trainers, three assistant <laughs> coaches, yeah. 
but, an assistant to yeah. the head coach. Head yeah. coach. But here's another point. Here's another point in our society. We are going to get to that stage where in Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, and football, you're going to see women coaches, women refs, women everything because of just how this country goes. Oh, yeah, you they're know, already there. They're going to say, oh, that's racist because you don't have a woman coach or you don't you, – because you don't have a, a minority, what you voice are is that? a racist. What character is this? <laughs> well, no, what character voice is that? No, what but character I, is this? Yeah, yeah. No, you did the, my de- it's, 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 my, it's my demon self inside. Oh, my Lord. But keep <laughs> but, it bottled up. But, no, I, I'm, you're, I'm, just, you're I'm sick. I'm sick of society. I'm sick of it. It's not just sports. You can always opt and out, I, Nick. You can always opt out. <laughs> I'm moving to Canada. Always, just go to Canada. Oh, you want, you want, it's always Canada. Nick, Nick, you think you don't like it here? You're going to like it in Canada? <laughs> I'll go to my bunker and hide like Tim oh, Thomas. Dear. Um, no, dig the hole now. No, I listen. I totally disagree with what you're saying. I, I understand where you're coming from, from a, a white boy change sort of situation. But I think I am not white superior, or whatever they call now. <laughs> no, no, I hold don't. it, hold it now. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I think, um, but there already are people. Uh, Fake news. No, I'm kidding. No, there, no, no. There are already people of color and women in like football, basketball. I mean, they're already there. I mean, I think for this, I think for filling out quotas, it's never a good thing. Like for blatantly filling out quotas, I think it diminishes. Well, look but, at, um, look at oh, the, look, was, was it the NFL? Um, I'm going to get something. Hold on. Yeah. Was the NFL that had the, that fine teams for not having a minority coach? I don't know if they find, I think for not interviewing a minority coach. I think like, I forget what it was. I remember, I remember seeing something on that where it was like, oh, yeah, these teams are in trouble because they don't have, like, a minority coach. Like, on, on the staff, staff at all? Member. Yeah. Well, that's kind of bizarre. I think because like there's three, so many. Two or three te- it was, like, two or three teams. I forget yeah. when I saw it, though. It was, like, months ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, well, yeah, speak, I mean. Speaking of demon. Lot, you're seeing a lot of women. Co- I mean, there's – there's women coaches in college basketball. I mean, yeah. not even in the women's basketball. It's in the men. They're well, coaching men's basketball. There's there's a woman's uh, – I forget if she's a receiver's coach or she's on the offensive side. Oh, of the yeah, ball. Green and Bay, San, right? No, Atlanta. There's, Atlanta. There's a, I believe there's Atlanta and San Francisco. And they're also on the uh, yeah. San, Antonio, San Antonio Spurs. Uh, there's a female coach. I don't know if she's still there. And there are they're female referees. In, they're starting to bring in um, – uh, female uh, commentators too for hockey. Yeah. Oh, and also Doris Burke, who actually I, I, I love. I both love and hate her because I think she's a great basketball mind. She's yeah. a commentator, and sometimes it feels like it's like, hey, don't say anything out of turn. It feels like they tell her not to do stuff. But I, all the same, I love the Van Gundys, and I forget because yeah. uh, I think they just you know they spout it and they they know what's wrong with the game and they know what's right. Yeah, and they, you know, it's fun to watch. And Mark Jackson is great too. And I also, I'll go on my soapbox about him. He doesn't get enough credit for uh, bringing the uh, Golden State Warriors to where they are or where they went to because they went, they won a championship the year after. I heard the NBA. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> of course they would. Build a wall. Oh my god! Oh dear, that looks like the China. old like wrestling buddy. China virus. Oh no. <laughs> Jeez. So horrible. Jesus. Well, there's a special place in hell for all of us now. Wait a minute uh, now. Wait a minute. Is that um, Biden? No. <laughs> oh dear. Oh man. We're uh, going we're going too far on this. No. Now. But no, oh, I God. no, but I you know, whatever you feel, Nick, and we all know what's wrong, but uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> but I think I, I think you're gonna have you know, it's going to it's going to be more inclusive in a good way. And you know what, you know what's going to happen? More quality play will come out of it. And that's just what's yeah. going to happen. It, it'll all filter itself out. That's how it happens. Well, I mean, you, I mean, we all saw what they did in the NHL All-Star game this past year where they had, like, the women's hockey with the women's all-female, all-women uh, referee staff. And, I mean, I thought it was I, – I, I get what they were doing, and I, I, I might get attached to saying this, but I thought it was um, – I thought it kind of ru- ruined it a little bit, like the All Star Game. But like at the same time, I kind of saw what they were doing. Yeah. But I mean, that's that's just I'm not I wasn't against it, but I mean, it just kind of ruined the whole experience. It's my weird. thing, oh, oh, my sorry. thing, looking at looking at baseball, looking at football, looking at hockey, and looking at, of course, the NBA. They have women's leagues. 
you know, there's women's baseball, which is typically mm -hmm. softball. You have the WNBA for the women's, you have the women's um, for hockey, and you have even things for, for women for football. So it already is differentiated. So I don't understand why society thinks that putting a woman in as a head coach, I'm not saying that it's wrong. I just question the philosophy where we've seen for years, hundreds and hundreds of years of some of these sports being played. Why change something that's not broken? It seems like everybody just wants to change things for the sake of change. I, well, I, and I think change can be a good thing, but I also like a comment I made earlier, I think it'll filter itself out. And I, you know, what's the thing like a quota is something that just kind of is forced on a lot of people and sometimes for, with good intention and sometimes the results aren't always, uh, and especially in this, because it's not really like this isn't something, I mean, it's someone's livelihood, but it's not necessarily more dependent on all their decisions don't necessarily uh, are to the detriment of someone, you know what I mean? Correct. If they mess up. So, I mean, this is more, it's an entertainment. So well, I mean, and, and with the whole quota thing, it's like, imagine, imagine being you know, a woman walking in for an interview and being the only woman there. And they're like, oh, well, you know, we, you could yeah, do the interview, it. but, but yeah. you're hired. And then, you know, it's like. Yeah, but I mean, I'd like, to, I'd like to think they would, you have more than one woman in the world and one more well, than qualified, right. but, yeah. But like, I, I feel like there's going to be some, at some point, there's gonna, that's going to like happen down the line somewhere, you know? Oh, yeah, and, but I, all, and I would count, and I don't disagree, and I would, I would counter that with the same way you, you know, Dennis Green got a job in the NFL for so many years. And it's not necessarily because he was the best coach, because it was the one available, and he had experience. Um, and I'm not I saying... I agree with that. Yeah, and you, and I, you know, I'm not. I'm not saying just every team should have it for the sake of necessarily just for the sake. No, I know. I'm just. I'm just. But, I'm just. No, making, I, I'm, I'm just saying that. Like I dig. You know, I mean, yeah, they're you know they're trying to do it for a quota right now and trying to just get the popular opinion for all of society. But I mean, I'm just saying, you know, how how do women feel about this? You know. Well, and I think it's a, I think it's a combo, and sometimes you know what I mean because I never think it's purely one thing. Uh, it never right. is with anything, but uh, I think, you know, you, I don't know, it's just, you'll get there. And I think, I think inch by inch um, or incrementally, you'll, you'll find, you'll find out how to, uh, how to, you know, integrate everyone. And especially coaching, like coaching, it shouldn't matter. Like, I don't know, like coaching, it shouldn't matter as much. I mean, I can, and it's also like the old way, like technically, like technically uh, uh, people of color and African Americans couldn't uh, get involved in baseball and, uh, basketball at one point and then all of a sudden you know integration and then it happens here's, so, I mean, my, here's another thing that might seem extreme but i mean that's part of i mean that's a little bit of what you know coaching and refing i that doesn't matter to me i think that's great if they want to do it it is what it is but mm -hmm. when you have a woman go into major league baseball say in the red sox roster you had a mm -hmm. 25 roster and there was a girl that was a part of that team yeah would we be accepting of that? I don't know. What do you think? Well, it, it all, it's weird. Baseball is also that other sport where you can be physical, but it's not as, like football, it's like, yeah, she might get killed. Correct. And you know what I mean? And I don't mean, like, I'm not trying to be too jokey about it, but it's like, no, it's like, yeah, I'm, a, I'm the first female linebacker. And it's just like, oh, she's dead in two weeks. <laughs> um, that would be a beast. No, but I, well, I mean, there are, there are enough women who can, kick the crap out of me that's i'm not to be honest oh yeah same uh, here yeah but uh but uh i don't know that's it's a good question i can't answer like i'm sure maybe 25 years down the line that'll be addressed if baseball is still alive but uh and isn't like, if any solid. sport is really still alive well if that's anything, a good point too i mean i don't know but also that begs the question is there or is there an equivalent to it is there a female equivalent to um baseball right now like a, a major league that's a good ball. question that's why i put it out there is because we're heading towards that phase in life with all these changes that have happened with here and it's going to be it may be difficult for some to accept some of these changes where things have been consistent for hundreds and hundreds of years i don't know where you're changed just the to make, hundreds on there well like for thousands baseball's been around years. since like the eight. The ba baseball has like, been around since like the 1860s. So yeah, no, I'm also, just saying, 160. So that's, that's where I'm getting that from. Some sports obviously haven't been around that long, no. but some have. 
So that's where I'm saying that hundreds of years. Well, I mean, all, the other thing too is there there isn't really, I'm, I'm, of course, emphasizing that yeah, 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 hundreds I'm, and yeah. A millennia there isn't, of there isn't really an equal equal uh, league for women into men's sports because even when you even when you say there's like a WNBA or a women's hockey league, the rules are different. They don't keep it the same. If you want an equal, if you want an equal league to the men's league, you should make the rules the same. Really change the rules? Doesn't anybody what want to hear my opinion? No, not no. really. No, I think I think I think we've got I think we haven't filtered enough through next. Screw it all! No. Screw it all! Law um, I mean, and order! Law and order! Look at look at women's lacrosse and men's lacrosse. They wear different equipment. Yeah. And women's hockey, they Big wear news. different. They wear different equipment too, and the rules are a lot different. You don't have as many penalties in women's hockey as you do men's. Really? Women in China. Yeah. Oh dear. He's evil. He's evil. He's evil. China's going to hate right. this one. That one. That one right there might need to permanently leave the studio. We might need the yeah. It needs to go in the garbage. Where it needs to go. He, he happens to be a chew toy for my dog. No, is. <laughs> He's a chew toy. The hair, the hair is a bit better. I will say. Yeah, I will say <laughs> so too. A Just a wild. little bit. Yeah, exactly. Um, I would do be. This has been quite a show here. Yeah. I do want to just mention quickly that baseball is in the ALDS uh, rounds right now. What I like about it is there is an off day, so you go boom, 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 boom. The next game, you don't have to wait a day or two to travel and all that. So I've liked the format so far. It's weird because you have like the Padres and the Dodgers playing in Texas while the athletics and the Astros are using the Dodgers park. It's just oh, wow, weird. Really? Yeah. It's all over the place. So they're using weird. Uh, the Texas Rangers park. They are using the Padres Dodgers. park, the Dodgers park. And there's one other, are they that finally is, in a bubble? Is that what they're finally like? Coming? They're kind of in a bubble kind of seating now for baseball. And of course, yeah. They're making up for the fact that they do, didn't do it right. But <laughs> yeah, well, my favorite teams, my favorite credit, team right now to get to potentially the World Series. The Padres are down 2-0 right now against the Dodgers. That's going to be tough to battle yeah. back in that. I like the Rays. The Rays have a really good chance at moving into the championship series. It looks like it's going to be against the Cheater Astros. So – I think the Rays will represent the American League, and I think the Dodgers will represent the uh, National League. So, is Evan Longoria so? He's on the Giants. He's oh. on the Giants. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Man, how did the they, Rays? How did they do it? They do it from really good scouting, really good prospects in their system, and just coming up. Like they have this one kid. I he has the longest last name in history, even worse than Salta Lamakia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That is just phenomenal. And he's doing a heck of a job and on the verge of sending the Yankees home. So that's great. So uh, we'll see. Not, They're going to play again tonight. So we'll see more. Hopefully the Rays can advance to the next round tonight. Sounds like you're agreeing with my statement from last show, Nick, uh, with the Tampa Bay championship season. Oh, city of champions. Yeah, but I think it's going to be the Dodgers that finally, Tom. They're going to be your world champions. I do. I don't think the Dodgers are, are going to go away without getting that championship this no, year. Probably so. not. Well, City of Champions my take on that. and Tweety Bird tattoos. We have um, a little bit of NHL news. I know we're going to just do it quick, but yes, there was the draft. Are you excited about any particular players, Tom, that the Bruins selected? Um, I was just reading up on it before we started the show. Uh, the, 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 uh, the kid they picked in the second round um, – It was – if my phone would like to load it now. His last name was Lori. Lori, Lori. Uh, first name, Mason. Okay. He's a defenseman, he, he I believe. Is, yeah, he's a defenseman, and he's 6'4". So, you know, he's got a good size. He's 200 pounds right now. Uh, only – he's going to be 20. He's going to be 20 years old in January. No, I'm thinking more by Char. I'll see you later. Um, Could be. I, they, I mean, the article here says that he still has a few more years before he's even going to be in a professional level. So, you know, we'll probably. There was another him. kid. There was we'll another kid too that was selected. Five years, six years from the from Woburn. 
apparently. There was a kid that was selected from Woburn. Uh, let me see if I can bring up his name. His name was, forget what round he went in. It was Riley Duran. Riley Duran was taken from the Bruins, Woburn native. So that's nice to see the Bruins selecting some people close to home. And I'm just hoping that the team that's assembled for this next year really can get over that hump and get that cup. I, I, I don't know if the window's closed or not. I don't know what we see until this season restarts, which will be in about November-ish time. I think yeah. right around Thanksgiving. I do think that the Bruins are going to be trying to move Tuka Rask. Like they can tell them, they can tell us that, nope, he's our goalie and everything. They are actively looking for a replacement for him. So I'll be curious to see what they do on that end. I know they're not going with Halak as the full-time guy. They, they already saw what happens with that. He's fine as your backup, but when he's the full-time starter, can't happen. Can't happen. So we'll provide you with any other updates with the Bruins as we hear, and we can talk about them more, too, on our next show that we are together. Final thing that I wanted to bring up, uh, does anybody have any other topics that they want to no, cover? No, this, this week before? is all you. This week is this all is you. All we already decided that last week. Oh, okay. yeah, that's right. So, do you guys remember these by chance? Of course. Phil, you may know what this is. VHS oh, well, thank games. you. Old man, what is this? <laughs> I'm old, too. I'm old, too. So, wow, hey, put, it, put on your really glasses, Phil, and take a look. Sir, Nick. Appreciate it. <laughs> so no, I, I do. I, I, have do been bu- I have been busy at work trying to convert old VHS tapes to uh, disc or file form. It's quite a process. I don't know if you've ever done it, Phil. Oh, of course. I do it all the time. And I just, I had them on my desk and I was just thinking about how much technology has changed specifically in the last 10 years, a little bit longer with that too. But this was the norm, you know, 80s, 90s, even early 2000s, that was your norm. That's what you recorded on. Now we have TiVos and DVRs and discs and files and all those kinds of things to record Streaming services. I just cannot believe looking back at things like this how poor the quality and signal was compared to how it is now. Like you pop one of these things in and it's flur- you know, it's fuzzy and it's not sharp. It's the tracking is all over the place. But this, this was your norm, folks. 70s, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. It's just amazing how much technology and stuff has changed now. Yeah, it's nuts. It does. So, and I was just looking at those and I felt that it was worth a conversation to have about and it's also, VHS tapes. It's also uh, pretty big in the vintage community, uh, especially this time of year, uh, VHS yeah. horror covers. I recommend if you're a fan of horror movies, check out old school horror covers. And uh, Nick, uh, Tom maybe, but I know Nick, you'll remember uh, going to rental stores and getting- Oh, you know, come on, Phil, I'm not that young. Whoa, all right, fine, Tom. <laughs> I said you might. I know, video, I know video and, rental stores. Come yeah. on now. Or even just mom and pa ones. I mean, a lot of times yeah. as a kid, I'd just go into the horror section and look at the covers because I couldn't get them because yep. they were R-rated. Yep. And my, my parents were psychos, so they didn't let me uh, rent them. Although I would have loved it if they did. Um, but yeah, no. So yeah, take a look at the old covers. They're all great. And, I even remember going to the library as a kid and checking out a, a tape. Yeah. I don't get a kick out of it. I, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get this one. Yeah, you still can, you by the way. Drop it off? Yeah, if they work. <laughs> well, no, you can, uh, not necessarily, all right, a plug for the Flint Memorial Library in North Reading, but you can still actually get uh, Blu-rays, DVDs, and also music, streaming music as well from Crazy. your library. It is nuts. Uh, people Crazy. don't know, like, it's weird. The library is still one of the best uh, things around. Another piece of technology that I know was so normal back in the day, it was the old record players. Mm. Yep. Those, those are just things that was a part of time, and now it's just we're in a whole new world and a whole Diluted. new land of, well, once again, of things it, like this and discs yeah. and but, you know, these damn things. It's, it's crazy. People still collect records. It's very, it, it, you bring up VHS and albums, and a lot of people still, you know. I, I have a friend that you big, know, still, still buys records. That he has big record time collector's stuff, items. So, big yeah. time. Big time. A lot of younger well, people. Well, anyways. Yeah. 
that's our show. We hope you enjoyed it. We were all over the place today between women in sports and VHS politics. tapes, yeah. politics, our lovely appearance from this gentleman who's going to be under arrest after this program. Um, <laughs> Let's hope. Band, yep, I'm going to put him in his wall where he belongs. Oh and I hope that I am back to be with you next week. That's all I have to say.